So today we're going to look at uh, thermal energy and I'm just going to give you a basic introduction to it and actually a lot of the concepts you should have learned back in your chemistry days. So let's say for example we have a collection of atoms, right? And as you learn these atoms are in motion, right? So your atoms are going to be moving and typically um, the atoms are going to all be moving different speeds. They'll be colliding with each other, some will be speeding up, some will be slowing down, but they're all going to have multiple speeds. Well, the fact that they do have speeds means, well, they have kinetic energy. Since they do have velocities, then they must have kinetic energies as well. So if you were to kind of look at each of these and, you know, say, oh, this has a kinetic energy, this has one, this has one, we could kind of look at this collection of atoms and say there's going to be some average kinetic energy of these atoms. And this is this basic concept of what we mean by this thermal energy. So each individual atom has some energy uh, as a whole. If you were to add up all these atoms, these would also have some energy as well. And um, we often talk about temperature. Temperature really is a macroscopic way of measuring the, uh, these kinetic energies out. In fact, if you think of a thermometer, right, here's our thermometer, boom. Basically, we have uh, liquid here which has atoms and they're moving and they're gonna start to expand so maybe they're at some level like this right and if we heat this up if we add some heat here heat 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 okay the atoms are gonna move faster if the atoms move faster this is gonna expand even more so maybe at this point it's zero degrees if it expands even more now maybe you call this 10 degrees if you add more heat, they go even faster, it expands even more, maybe you call that 20 degrees, et cetera, et cetera. So as you can see, well, if, as the, energies, if it's the atoms are moving faster, they have more kinetic energy and they're gonna expand and they, we would say there's more temperature. So the kinetic energy we can say is directly proportional to its temperature. In fact, the equation for kinetic energy here, and this would be an average kinetic energy, this is going to be equal to 3 halves kBT. So notice the proportionality. This is our temperature here. T is our temperature. And kB is what's called the Boltzmann's constant. Boltzmann's constant. And this is just a number, 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23rd joules per Kelvin. So this temperature here is going to be in degrees Kelvin. So um, what is a Kelvin? Recall that we have uh, kind of three basic temperature scales. We have the Fahrenheit scale, right? And this is basically by US, us, plus, uh, I don't know, there's like four countries or something like Bahamas, uh, Cayman Islands, those powerhouses. Um, and I think there's a few more, Belize, something like that. But anyways, um, this is not really a logical system. We will not be using this. The rest of the world will be using Celsius. And um, Celsius is based on the boiling point and melting point of water of 0 degrees and 100 degrees. This would be the boiling point. This would be the melting point of H2O. And then they just kind of put the increments in between of... Uh, 100 degrees in between that. Um, so that's a Celsius scale. Now the Kelvin scale is based on essentially an absolute temperature, an absolute lowest possible temperature. And we call that absolute zero. If you look at back at our last equation, right, where we have Ke equals 3 halves KBT, well, notice if T gets smaller and smaller, eventually if it reaches zero, then that means that the atoms would stop moving. They have zero kinetic energy at that point. So that's kind of our definition of our Kelvin. Now we're going to use the same increments as Celsius. In other words, um, an increase of one degree Celsius is going to be also an increase of one degree Kelvin. So absolute zero is going to be equal to, so that'd be zero degrees Kelvin is going to be about negative 273 degrees Celsius. So kind of the conversion if you're trying to go from Celsius to Kelvin would be uh, degrees Kelvin 
is going to be equal to the degree Celsius plus 273 degrees. In general, um, we're going to be using the Kelvin scale. So whenever you do your calculations, you're going to be using the Kelvin scale. Now the only time you can really use Celsius is when you have a like a delta. So if you have like a delta T, like you're comparing two temperatures, 50 degrees and uh, zero degrees, for example, the delta here, if this was Celsius, would be 50 degrees. Now because we're just adding 273, so this would be what, in Kelvin, this would be uh, 323 minus 50 degrees, oops, minus 273 degrees would be 50 degrees as well. So if you do use a delta, you can use either the Kelvin or the Celsius scale. Um, but in general, uh, we're going to be use Kelvin when you just have like in this last equation, for example, T, you would be using your Kelvin degrees. So the last concept with this um, is a term we call internal energy. All right, and actually a lot of times thermal energy and internal energy would be the same. So kinetic energy, really what kinetic energy means is this is the average or average kinetic is the average of each of these. Now notice in our equation, T might be like 200 or something, KB is going to be a very small number. So our average kinetic energy of each individual atom is going to be a small amount. Well, internal energy, this would be the sum of uh, all the atoms, sum of kinetic energies of all the atoms. All right, so, you know, if you have a billion atoms, you would take whatever the kinetic energy average is, multiply it by one billion, and there you go. That's the number, uh, that, that would be the actual internal energy of the substance. So the symbol we use for internal energy is going to be U, and that would simply be, well, N times the Ke average, where N is going to be the number of atoms or molecules. I'll write it as molecules. So you could also write this as 3 halves N KBT. So you can see the average kinetic energy is just proportional to the temperature. The internal energy is proportional to the temperature, but also the number of atoms. Because, you know, if we had one atom, it's going to be one value. If you have 100 atoms, it's going to be 100 times as much. All right, so that will be it for the intro. We're going to go into much more details about these in uh, future lessons.